Take our Bibles once again and go back to Numbers chapter 14. This time I'll read it to you with an Aussie accent so you guys can understand it. But uh, Numbers chapter 14. <laughs> um, as you're turning there, I'm just going to read to you quickly from Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Once again it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. And what are we up to this time? We're up to the fourth series on the fruits of the Spirit. Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. So we're up to the topic of long-suffering. What does it mean to be long-suffering? That's a long word. It's a long word. It's got long-suffering in it. What does it mean? I think the definition can be found within that, that same word there. But let's just have a look at Numbers 14 once again. We read through that. Numbers 14, verse 18. You see, when you look up the, 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 the phrase long-suffering, the, the one in the Bible who has this attribute you know, given to them time and time again is our Lord God. You see, our Lord is a God who is long-suffering. Thank God for that. Okay? Because if we, if we are just honest with ourselves, we are deserving of death. We are deserving of eternal judgment, eternal hellfire. But it's because of the long-suffering of God that we can be called the children of God. Now, let's have a look at this. Numbers 14, verse 18. These are words of Moses to God, all right? And he says to God, he says, the Lord is long-suffering. He's, re he's reminding the Lord, Lord, you're long-suffering, he says, and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Just a reminder there that the sins we commit in our generation can have lasting effects on the generations to come. You know, we need to be mindful as parents about the sins we, we commit in our lives, but that's not so much a topic today. Right now, the topic is about the long suffering of the Lord. Now, I just want you to backtrack there. Look at verse number 17. And by the sorry, I should say the title of the sermon tonight is The Lord is Long Suffering. Okay, those first four words there in, in verse 18, the Lord is long suffering. But just backtrack to verse 17. Verse 17. This is, uh, of course, uh, Moses speaking to, to the Lord. And as you, if you were paying attention to that chapter reading, we once again saw the Israelites rise in rebellion against, again, against the Lord, rising and murmuring against the Lord. You know, why have you brought us out here complaining to Moses, thinking that God had brought them to the wilderness to kill them, to slay them? And it angered the Lord. It angered to see the rebellion of his people. Okay? And the Lord just tells Moses, look, I'm just going to wipe them out. You know, they've gone too far. It's time to wipe them out. It's time to start again. You know, I'll bring forth a new nation coming through you, Moses. You know, I'll use you, Moses, and we'll establish a new nation through your loins, through your generations. And it's interesting. You know, we see the anger of the Lord. And then we see Moses. And by the way, Moses is a great picture of an Old Testament pastor. You know, he pastors the church in the wilderness. You know, and we see the long suffering of Moses play out as well. And he goes and he beseeches the Lord. He goes and begs the Lord. And here in verse number 17, he says, you know, and now I beseech thee, Lord, listen to me. You know, let the power of my Lord be great according as thou hast spoken, saying. So how does Moses appease the Lord? You know, it's, it's always made me, has, have you ever wondered, you know, God's about to wipe out Israel. You know, how could Moses have, you know, changed the heart of God to, to not destroy them after all? What does Moses do? Do you notice what he did there in verse number 17? He says, Lord, you said these words. You see, the Lord is bound by his word. If you want to know the Lord God, we've got the word of God right here in our King James Bible. You see, we know that our Lord God keeps his promises. He keeps his word. He does not go back on his word. He does not go back on his promises. And that's what Moses is counting on. He says, Lord, you know, he's not saying, Lord, you should be long suffering. He says, Lord, you told me in verse 17. Remember, you told me you were long suffering. You know, you need to be more merciful to these people. If we just drop down to verse 19, he says, uh, Moses says to the Lord, pardon, you know, I beseech thee the iniquity of this people according to the greatness of thy mercy, as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Now, if you're curious, just... Um, 
yeah, what, you, actually you can turn there. You can go to Exodus 34 now. Go to Exodus 34 verse 5. Exodus 34 verse 5. Just to show you that Moses memorized the scriptures. You know, jo, jo, uh, Moses memorized what God had said to Israel and he brings that word before the Lord. You know, and like, this is what we need to remember sometimes. And if you're like me, you're going to go through this when you've sinned against the Lord, when, you, when you're going through a difficult time spiritually and you, you're, you're ashamed for your sins. You might be, you know, just too ashamed to go before the Lord and seek his forgiveness. You know, you might be too ashamed to go and seek, you know, his mercy. You know, but here's the thing. We've got the, the, the words of the Lord and he promises us if we go and confess our sins to him that he will do that. If we just ask for forgiveness, He will cleanse us from all our unrighteousness and we can have great fellowship with the Lord. Hey, we can take that promise of the Word of God and bring that to the Lord. Even when we feel inadequate, we know that the Lord will stand by His Word. We know He will stand by His promises. Look at Exodus 34 verse 5. This is after uh, Moses um, uh, creates the, uh, the, the, the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments. It says, And the Lord descended in the cloud, and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin. And the will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation so i just wanted to bring you there and show you these were the words of god right and moses memorized this scripture he knew the promises of god and when god you know was uh, you know taken up in his wrath he was going to uh bring you know the cur his curse upon israel moses appeals to that word moses appeals to the long suffering of god you see our god is a god that is long suffering now what i get to do guys is go to second peter chapter 3 Go to 2 Peter chapter 3, and I just want to show you a few examples of how this attribute of long suffering is commonly given to our Lord God. But I'm going to read to you from Psalm 86 while you're turning there. Psalm 86, verse 15. It says, But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long suffering, and plenteous in mercy and truth. You'll often see these same words coupled together with long suffering, compassion, gracious, mercy. Okay? Because you must have these qualities in your life in order for you to be long suffering toward others. Okay? But but one thing I want you to notice, this is something specific about the Lord. There's a reason why this is called a fruit of the spirit. Because a natural man has no cap capacity to be long suffering. No capacity whatsoever. It must come from the Spirit of God. It must come by you walking after the Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to work in your life. You guys are in 2 Peter chapter 3. Look at verse 15. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. Why is the long-suffering of God so important? You know, why is it? Yeah, so He doesn't destroy us. But most of all, I guess the most important part for us is that we remember it's by the long-suffering of God that we can even have salvation. Look at that in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. It says, And account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. You see, the reason you have salvation is because of His long-suffering. Because He's, he's, you know, he's seeing you in, in a position as, of a sinful creature. Someone who deliberately goes and breaks the laws of God. Someone who has your own pride and your own will. You know, disobeying the Lord and yet He puts up with it. You know, and, he, and, and th thank God for those of you that are saved, you know, that he was able to send someone, a soul winner to you, to preach the gospel, you know, and, and you believed. And, and thank God for that long suffering. Otherwise, you wouldn't have these opportunities that you did have to believe on the Lord God. And uh, uh, if you guys can just drop to verse number nine, drop, drop down to verse number nine. Just once again, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance you see in order for you to be a soul winner in order for you to have a passion for the lost community here on the sunshine coast you must develop long suffering as well 
And notice that it says, but is long suffering to us word. You see, long suffering is something, is, a, is, a, is an attribute of relationship with another person. Okay, from the Lord to us, but then from us to other people. And uh, I'm going to read to you very quickly from Romans 2, verse 4. It says, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering? Hey, that's another word that's very similar forbearance. You know, bearing, bearing, uh, you know, uh, trials, bearing difficulties, and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. So it's such an important attribute, guys. The reason we're saved, we can count it based on the long-suffering of God. Now, something very important for you to turn to is 1 Timothy chapter 1, please. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. Because you see, it's great to acknowledge that the Lord is long-suffering, but He wants to develop this fruit in your life. Okay, And it's one of the harder ones. I reckon out of all the, the fruits of the Spirit, I would say long-suffering is one of the toughest ones to, to, uh, to do well at, okay? And we'll see why. 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. You see, the Apostle Paul is a prime example of the long-suffering of God. A really great example. And it's, it's, it's uh, said here in verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. So what does Paul say about himself? He says, look, out of all the sinners in the world, I am chief. I am the worst. You see, Paul just was able to see his condition. And we know what Paul was like, don't we? We know that he was persecuting the church of God. We know that he hated the name of Christ. We know that he saw the followers, the Christians, the followers of Christ as this cult that he had to destroy, that he had to trample down. Okay? He hated Christianity as it were. And that's why he calls himself a chief of sinners. But let's keep reading verse number 16. How be it, for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. You see, we need to be mindful that God was long-suffering with Paul, someone who hated the church of God, someone who persecuted his believers, someone who persecuted the children of God. And this is why I'm very cautious with throwing the label reprobates around. Okay, Because let's be honest, I mean, if we had a Paul right now on the Sunshine Coast, you know, causing believers to be put in jail, you know, trying to destroy us, trying to destroy our church, it would be very tempting to say, man, this guy's a reprobate. I mean, look at him. He hates the Lord. He hates these things. But you know what? He's, a, he's an excellent example of someone who God was, uh, um, was long-suffering with. You know, and we need to remember, you know, not to give up on our loved ones. You know, you, you may have given them the gospel, our friends, our family, you know, people that you really care about. You know, and I hear stories where you say, man, I've been given this person the gospel time and time again. In fact, I'm just reminded this morning, I was, I was speaking to a friend of mine whose father passed away. And I, I, I said to him, you know, it must have been sad because, you know, you knew he was not saved. And he goes, no, 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 I have hope. You know, I have all these years, you know, I was giving him the gospel. I was, I was showing him, you know, I was trying to get him away from the Roman Catholic Church. And time and time again, he would reject it. He would reject the gospel, reject the gospel. He goes, but one day, you know, he was reading his Bible. And he said to me, you know, it's by faith, isn't it? It's just by believing. And he's like, yes, it is. And he's like, well, then I'm saved. You know, can, can I go to church and get baptized now? You know, so he had this hope. And you see, some people give up on their families way too early. Sometimes you need, you know, you need time to hear the gospel. Sometimes it, it take, it's not just believing the gospel, but quite often it's letting go of what you used to know, the, the, the deception that you used to have. You know, it takes time for people to let that go in order to fully understand and appreciate the gospel at hand. You know, we've, been, we've got to be careful not to just throw everybody under the reprobate bus. I'm sure we would have done that to Paul if he was around today, all right? Now, of course, I'm not trying to excuse. There definitely are people that are reprobates, but we should make sure that we keep it within the scriptural parameters that we have in the Bible. All right? Now, one thing you, I want you to notice there, it's not just 
that Paul is an example of long suffering of salvation, but that he himself is an example, he says there in verse 16, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. You see, Paul was not just an example of the long suffering of, of the Lord, but he was also an example of a long suffering of a believer. Okay? It, it's almost like God gave him so much, you know, was, was so patient with Paul. And, and Paul just appreciated it so much. And, and then he was able to show forth that long suffering with others because we know the persecution that he faced. And I won't get you guys to turn there. I'll just read it very quickly. 2 Corinthians 11.23, just again, when it, when an example of the sufferings of Paul. 2 Corinthians 11.23, it says, But they, ministers of Christ, I speak as a fool, I am more, in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths, uh, deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A, a night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. So this is, look, you know, we get this great example of Paul, you know, who appreciates the long suffering of God. And then he's able to apply that in his own life. We see this was a fruit that Paul developed in his life. And even through all the trials and difficulties that he went through, hey, he suffered long, didn't he? And he says it's not just the, the sufferings of the physical body, but also the care of all the churches that were put upon him. And we know, obviously, that he was an apostle to, to many of the churches in the New Testament period there. But I want you to now think about what does it mean? If we want to be people that are long-suffering, we need to develop this fruit in our lives through the work of the Holy Ghost. What does it mean? What does long-suffering mean? And I think it's quite simple. I mean, it's kind of defined in the word itself. It means to suffer long, doesn't it? It means to suffer long. Now, when we think about the word suffer in the Bible, in our King James Bible, um, quite often there's two definitions. And uh, it's interesting because in, in the phrase long-suffering, both these definitions kind of make sense under, under, the, under, the, under the scope of long-suffering. So, for example, to suffer, you know, the most common application of that, that word is to, um, to feel pain or to bear pain, right? When you're suffering, you're feeling that pain, right? Uh, but then we also have the, the word suffer, like when Christ said, you know, suffer the little children. You know, was he saying, let the children bear pain? You know, no, of course not. He was saying, allow the little children, allow the little children to come unto me. Okay, so we have these two definitions of the word suffer. But in some way, some ways the term, the word long suffering, both of these definitions apply. Both of these definitions apply. You see, because uh, suffer means to allow, and that's what it means. It's to allow others to cause you to suffer. You know, it's allowing others to bring some pain upon you and suffering long, bearing that, okay? Not, you know, not, uh, not being someone that is, you know, impatient, not someone that flies off your, you know, off your rocker, you know, but, but forbearing long with other people. This is why it's so hard, because when someone does wrong to us, immediately the flesh just wants revenge. Immediately the, the, the flesh wants to destroy that person, you know, especially if you've been treated unfairly, you know, unrighteously, or some enemy has come against you. But you see, we were all enemies of God at some point when we were unsaved, you know. And once again, just a reminder, you know, God could have just wiped us out, you know, just like he, he was desiring to wipe out Israel in the, the passage that we read. And yet we see that with his long suffering, he was able to bear, bear well with it. It's such an important quality to have because it's going to keep you grounded in life. It's, it's not going to get you to overreact and it's going to bring peace in your life. It's going to bring a lot of peace in your life if you can be someone that suffers long. Now, um, another word that's commonly used for long suffering is the word patience. 
Okay, so if you, if you look, wanted to study this out, you know, look up the word patience in your Bible. In fact, a lot of the modern version, I'm not supporting the modern versions, but a lot of the modern versions change in the fruits of the Spirit from long-suffering to patience. Okay, and, uh, you know, they are very similar words. You, you cannot suffer long unless you have patience. You know, those two things go hand in hand. But you see, the term long-suffering is a much harder word. It's a much harder word than patience. And if I can give you an example, you know, just today, just today I had to take six of my kids to the dentist, okay? So they, they got a checkup, they got a clean. So I'm sitting there, you know, one, one goes, and then another one going, and another one. Look, I'm thinking, man, I've got to get home. I've got to prepare a sermon for tonight, you know? But was I, was I suffering? <laughs> you know, well, was, I, was I suffering long? You know, was I bearing pain? I mean, if anyone was bearing pain, it was probably my kids, you know, with, with the drills and stuff that was going into their mouth. But, you know, no, no, you know, but, but I had to be patient. You know, I, I had to be patient. But, hey, I was in, in, you know, in an air-conditioned, you know, place. You know, I was sitting down. I had my phone. I was thinking about the sermon tonight. You know, I, 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 uh, I had patience. But I didn't really need long-suffering. I wasn't bearing with pain. You know, it wasn't something that was difficult for me to just sit there and wait for six children to have their dental, dental work done. And so, you see, long-suffering is more than patience. It's, pati it's being patient with pain. It's being patient with other people that are wronging you. Tribulation that has come your way. That's why it's so hard. Patience in of itself is kind of hard. But what about if you had to be patient and suffer at the same time? So much harder. I mean, I've heard people say, you know, I'm just not a patient person. If you're not a patient person, you're definitely not going to be long-suffering. Okay? You're definitely not going to be able to uh, bring that forth, that fruit. And that's why you need the Holy Ghost. You need to ask the Lord to help develop this into your life. Can you guys please go to Ephesians chapter 4? Ephesians chapter 4. You see, forbearance or long-suffering is necessary for us to have peace in our church, to have peace with other people, but especially with our church, all right? Because we spend time together, not only in the church service, we fellowship with one another. And I've, I've mentioned this before, we all have different backgrounds, we're all at different places in our spiritual walk, you know, and sometimes it's tempting to look at other believers in the church and say, wow, look, they're really failing this area of life. Why aren't they a bit more like me? You know, and that can cause problems. That can cause divisions, you know, within the church. But look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Paul writes, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. And I, I love how he just does that because he's like, by the way, guys, I'm in prison. Right? If, if I can suffer along with you and with other people in the church while in prison, how much more you? That's kind of the idea there, right? I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. You see, we need to be counted worthy in our spiritual walk. The Lord desires that we would walk after our calling. Verse number two, how do we walk? He says, with all lowliness and meekness, Meekness is another fruit of the Spirit. But again, like I said to you guys, a lot of these things overlap. With all lowliness and, and meekness, with long suffering, and now he says it another way, forbearing one another in love. Hey, you're going to, in church, you have to bear with one another. Say, why, man, this is, this is meant to be a believer. We're meant to be able to get along. We have all these things in common. We're like minded in faith. Why would I ever have to get to a position when I have to put up with other people? If you think that, you've not spent time with people, right? If you think, if you think that, you know, uh, being gathered together with, with other people is not going to, there's not going to be conflict and strain, it's always going to happen. And Paul knows this. But see, we need to forbear one another in love. We need to have long suffering. Look at verse number three. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. How do we make sure that this is the church of peace? How do we make sure that there's peace within the brethren? It says we have to endeavor, endeavoring. It's something we need to strive to do. It doesn't come naturally, okay? It requires work. It requires you to suffer long with others, okay? Be patient with others, you know? Instruct others in love so they can grow and mature. Give people time. I mean, how much time has God given you? You know, how much time did God give you to be saved? And you say, well, I got saved at a young age. All right, well, how much time has God given you to mature and to grow and to be more like Christ? And He's still forbearing with you. 
Okay? I'm sure there's a lot of chastisement that I've, I probably should have had by the Lord, but because of his forbearance, because of his long suffering, you know, he's, he's, he's allowed me to, to work through that before he's brought down that, you know, that, that rod of chastisement. I'm sure it happens. Now, here's the thing. One thing that I've, I, and maybe this is just me, but when I, when I think it's just me, I, I'm reminded that we're made of the same flesh and blood. So it's probably the same for all of us. But one thing I've noticed about myself, and, and I'm just being honest, you know, I'll tell you one of my sins, is that I, I've realized that I'm not very, I, I, don't, I don't suffer long with the people that I'm closest to. You know, my family, my wife, my kids. You know, more, more often than not, I'm more patient. You know, I suffer long with strangers. You know, with other people, my work colleagues, friends, things like that. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, ex I'm probably expecting a lot of you are, are, are kind of the same. And especially with kids, you know, you, you give them instruction and they don't carry through what you've asked of them exactly how you intended, you know. And, and you know, you might, it might cause you to get upset with them, might cause you to get angry, you know. But you see, if you're going to be a teacher, if you're going to have authority over people, you have to develop the skill of long-suffering, okay? And if you're a parent, you're a teacher. You're teaching children to become adults. You're teaching them to be Christian, to be lovers of the Lord and lovers of the Word of God, you know? And we need to make sure that as parents, we suffer long with our children. You know, especially kids get to a certain age, and I'm sure you've you know, experienced this, where it's like they ask every question, you know, every little question. You know, why is the sky blue? You know, why is the tree green? And you're like, oh man, do I need to answer? Yes, answer the questions. You know, suffer long. You know, th their minds are like a sponge and, and they're ready to learn. And the Lord has given you those little minds so you can influence them. You know, so you can instruct them in the ways of the Lord. Hey, if you're not going to teach your children, someone else is. Okay, it's going to be the world, it's going to be the TV, it's going to be the public school system, it's going to be their non-Christian friends, non-Christian relatives. If you don't give them the answers, if you don't be patient with your kids, they're going to learn it from someone else. Okay, it might as well come from you. It might as well come from you, okay, because you're going to make sure with you who love them the most, you're going to make sure that they receive the best instruction. Hey, we need to learn to be long-suffering with our family members, with our wives, with our husbands, with our children. Please turn to Luke 17. Luke 17. Luke 17, verse 3. Long suffering is a necessity for forgiveness. Okay, in order for you to be able to forgive somebody for the wrong that they've done in your life, you need to be long suffering. And I'm just reminded, and I know we've already covered this while we're going through the book of Luke, but just as a reminder, Luke 17, verse 3, it says, Take heed to yourselves. Jesus speaking to his disciples, If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to, to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the apostles also said, sorry, and the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. <laughs> How can I forgive my brother seven times in a day if you wronged me again and again and again all in the one day? They were seeking for an increase in their faith. You see, what Jesus Christ, even though the word's not used here, what Jesus Christ was teaching is long-suffering to the brethren, long-suffering to those that do you wrong and come and ask for forgiveness. Hey, be ready to forgive others. You won't be able to forgive people. Look, you, 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 I'm sure you've done this because I've done this. When someone's wronged you, they've said sorry, and you've accepted the apology by word but not in your heart. By word you said, yep, that's fine, I accept it, but you're still bitter. You're still bitter against them for what they've done. Hey, that's wrong. That's wrong. And the Bible says here that if they ask and they apologize, forgive them. And if they do it again, what do you do? And they, and they ask, they repent once again, you forgive them again. You do it seven times in a day, you do it again and again. You, and look, we need the Lord to increase our faith in order for, for us to bear well with others. You know, we, the, the Lord just asks us to suffer a little bit, to put up with some pain from other people, you know? Put up with, I won't go through some examples, but I'm sure you guys can think of examples in your life where you've lost patience with people. You know, it's not that they were wicked. It's not that they were necessarily trying to hurt you or annoy you. It's just that because you were lacking long suffering, you know, 
you've gotten a bitterness in your heart toward other people. No, you know what? God has shown long suffering to us. We should do the same to our fellow brethren. Can you guys please turn to Romans chapter 5? Romans chapter 5, verse 3. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. And this is one of my favorite portions of Scripture. I've preached from it before. But the question always is, how do I gain this patience? How can I be patient? And we're going to see the word patience here. But again, like I said, you can't forbear or you can't suffer long unless you have patience first. Okay? So how do we develop patience in our life? Romans 5 verse 3 has the answer. And you see, it's not easy. Look what it says. And not only so, but we glory. <laughs> it's so hard. But we glory in tribulations also. When's the last time you've gloried in tribulation? I'm sure you've gone through tribulation. I mean, let's just think about this. Like, think about the, the latest tribulation you've gone through. The, the, the latest trials you've gone through. Can you honestly say that during those tribulations, I was glorying, I was joyful, I was rejoicing? I hope you can say yes. Because <laughs> if you can say yes, then you're mature in the Lord. You know, you've developed this fruit of, of the Spirit into your life. But I think quite often we'll say no. You know, no, we, uh, we complained. We were like the Israelites of old. We murmured. We complained. You know, we asked the Lord, why is this happening? You know, we were downcast. We were depressed instead of glorying in the tribulation that came. And then let's keep reading there. Verse number, uh, sorry. Yeah, let, verse number three, the end of verse number three. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. You see, sometimes the Lord allows you to go through tribulation just so you can learn some patience. Amen. Just so you can develop patience in your life. Okay? And you say, I don't, want, I don't want to go through tribulation. Well, how else are you going to get patience? Okay? Let's keep reading. And verse number four, and patience, experience, and experience, hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. You see, you need to experience hardships in your life in order for you to um, learn patience. You know, the reason why the Apostle Paul had so much patience, why he was long-suffering through his ministry in the Lord is because he suffered so much tribulation himself. He gained experience, you know, and he rejoiced. He rejoiced in the trials, knowing that it was for the name of the Lord, knowing that he stood up for the Lord, knowing that he was apply, you know, laying up treasures in heaven. That's what his mindset was. The winning of souls, the laying up treasures. His mindset was eternity, not just the tribulations that come in this temporal life. I'm going to read to you quickly. You don't need to turn there. Colossians 1.11. It says, Strengthen with all might, according to His glorious power, unto all patience and longsuffering with joyfulness. With joyfulness. Okay? Now you might say, you know what? I'm someone that has gone through a lot of trials. I've gone through a lot of tribulation. Why do I not have patience? Why am I not long-suffering even though I've gone through trials and tribulations? Because you see, it's not just going through trials, but it's going through trials with joy. It's going through trials with joy that will work patience in your life, that will cause you to suffer long in your life, to forbear with others. You know, you might be going through longer tribulation than you need to because instead of being joyful about it, you're downcast, you're murmuring, you're complaining. And the Lord's like, well, I'll keep you there until you can find joy in your tribulation. Amen. And we can find joy in your tribulation, that's when you'll be able to long suffer. That's when you'll have the patience that you need to develop. So look, guys, when you go through trials and difficulties, rejoice. The Lord wants you to work on patience. And if you can get that patience down, we saw the world, then it's experience. And then it's, uh, what was it? Experience, hope. And then the Lord that makes, you know, is developing you, maturing you, so you would not be ashamed for the cause of Christ. And it's helping you strengthen your spirit, strengthen that inner man inside of you by developing this fruit of the spirit. You know, and pastors, you know, if you ever have a desire to be a pastor or a church leader, pastors need to, just like we saw with Moses, pastors must be people with long suffering. Like I said, you know, I'm, I think I'm pretty good at it. I think. <laughs> All right. But I do struggle a little bit with my family, you know, and I need to work on that. Okay. You know, because I guess sometimes you have a higher standard with your own family, a higher standard with your own children, you know, than you do with others. But, you know, I need to remember 
that, you know, my family comes first. You know, my family is my ministry. Without my family, I do not have a ministry, you know. But hey, as a pastor, we need to learn, or if you have a desire to be a pastor, you know, you need to learn long-suffering. Uh, where are you guys? Are you guys in Romans? Can you just, I'll get you, just go back to, uh, let's go, here. Yeah. Go to 2 Timothy, please. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. This is an instruction to pastors. Preach the word. Yep, got that one locked in. Preaching the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. You know, just, just preach it regardless if it's in fashion or not. If it's in season, just do so. Reprove, rebuke. Hey, I love that. I, I love to call out sin, right? I, I love to rebuke the false prophets and to rebuke, you know, sinful ways and, and, and to, you know, teach people the commandments of God. Awesome. Then it says, exhort. What does it mean to exhort? It means to build up. Okay, build up believers. Don't just tear them down when they're sinners, but then build them up in love, right? It says here, exhort. Look how we've all long suffering and doctrine. You see, it's not just doctrine that needs to be preached. A pastor is more than just someone that gets behind the pulpit and preaches doctrine. He needs to be someone that can suffer long, that can bear well with others, that can be patient with others. You know, and like I said, sometimes with your children, you know, you get frustrated because you give them direction and they might even do it, but they don't do it to, you know, the level you expect them to do. And, you know, you can get frustrated, but really what, what should happen is you should bring your children and teach them, hey, you have not done that right. This, this is where you you know, this is where, you, where you're lacking. And with love, with, with forbearing, with long suffering, instruct them to do what's right, you know. And it's the same as a pastor. You know, uh, the pastor is to, is to look out for the souls of the people here. You know, and sometimes, you know, I, I, might, I might get frustrated because I see something happen, right? But then I need to be reminded, hey, no, I need to be long-suffering. I need to teach with doctrine. I need to remind people the fundamentals of the faith. You know, we need to go back sometimes and, 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 and you know, lock in certain doctrines, lock in certain truths, lock in certain characteristics that we should have as Christians, you know? And it's, it's an important quality for a pastor to have. Now, there is something else I want to talk about when it comes to the long suffering. I, I've pretty much covered, and I hope you guys realize just how important it is. But you see, long suffering is not only for us to see the love of God, but it also serves to see His wrath. Okay? So we need to make sure that when we think about God, you know, yes, He's a God of love. We, we know that. But He's also a God of wrath. And His long suffering plays a part in this. All right, let's have a look at this. If you guys can, uh, I'll get you guys to go to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 20. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 20. And uh, we know that the Lord's going to destroy this earth. You know, it's coming. The day's coming. But we also know that in the past, He also destroyed the earth. Remember how He did it? He did it with a flood in the days of Noah. You guys remember that? Well, let's have a look at this. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 20. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 20. It says here, Which sometime were disobedient, when once the long sufferings of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was, a pre was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. Now notice that. Notice here that it's talking about the days of Noah. And that the Lord was long-suffering during these days. And how did He destroy the earth? By a flood, by water, right? He destroyed everyone that was outside of that ark. You say, well, how long-suffering was God? Well, how long did it take Noah to build that ark? Does anyone remember? It was 120 years. 120 years! You know, the world was already wicked. God had already decided, it's, I've got to destroy this earth. You know, I've got to destroy all living things. But thank God, you know, Noah found, uh, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You know, Noah and his family. And he instructs Noah, you need to go and build that ark. And he does. But it takes him 120 years. I mean, can you imagine the Lord seeing the wickedness of, this, of the world day in, day out for 120 years until Noah finished off that ark? We see two things there. We see the love of God. That he waited for Noah to be finished. Okay? We wait, he waited for Noah to be safe before he poured out his wrath. That's a great thing. But we also see, see the long suffering. 
how every day as the wicked, you know, uh, cause the Lord to get angry, you know. And, and this is why the Lord forbears with the wicked, because He allows the wrath of God to be built up. And on the day of His judgment, the day of His wrath, it comes down like a ton of bricks. You know, when God pours out His wrath, it's not just a little. It's the entire portion. It's the entire portion. Why? Because He was long-suffering to begin with. Okay, And we know also that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. So God did instruct Noah to preach, to get them right with the Lord. He gave them time, 120 years. Hey, we talk about the Sunshine Coast being not receptive. Imagine preaching for 120 years and no one getting saved. All right, no one getting on the ark with you, except the animals. Right? I mean, that, that was an unreceptive place all right, at that time. No wonder God had to destroy the earth. But we see how long-suffering plays a part in the wrath of God. I'll get you guys to turn to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And while you're turning there, I'm just going to read to you from Romans 9.22. It says, What if God, willing to show His wrath and to make His power known, endured with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? You see, the Lord wants His wrath to be known. He wants the power of God to be known, okay? And part of that is not just the expression of His love. Part of that is the expression of His wrath. You know, to show the world His holiness, to show the world that He is without sin, that there is no darkness in Him, in him at all, that w when people are wicked, you know, He, he pours out His wrath, but he, he, he takes His time with His long suffering. He allows the, 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 the vessels of wrath to be filled up so He can pour it down and destroy the wicked. This is the truth of the God we worship. You know, make sure you always have the balance, the love, the wrath. But both places, you know, it, it's built up by long suffering. You know, long suffering plays a part in the love of God as well as the wrath of God. Make sure you're on the side of the love of God. Make sure you're on the side where you come to repentance, you acknowledge Jesus as your only Savior, and you believe on Him. That you realize that it's by faith alone and without the deeds of the law. And when you've done that, you can rejoice in the, in the long-suffering of the Lord. But can you imagine if you, you face the wrath of God and you've allowed all the sins, all the weakness of your life build up and the Lord's been patient, the Lord's given you time, but as He's given you time, His wrath has built up time and time and time again till He casts you into that lake of fire. I mean, I don't want to be there. You know, we don't want our loved ones to be there. That's why it's so important for us to get that gospel message out. You know, to, to our friends, family, and, and to our community. So let's just wrap it up now, guys. Um, Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Let's just finish on this instruction by Paul. He says, Put on, therefore. See, you need to put it on. It's not natural. You need to actually make an effort to put this on. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Now again, look at this, verse 13. Forbearing one another. That's what it means to suffer along with others. To forbear one another and forgiving one another. You see, like I said, the only way you can forgive each other is by suffering along with them. Okay? And then it says, look, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. <laughs> I love that. How much should you forbear? Okay, how much should you long suffer? How much should you forgive? As much as God has forgiven you. As much as God has been long suffering to you. Okay, that's how you should treat your fellow brothers in the Lord. So we can make sure we have peace uh, in this church. And look, this is a great, this is a great fruit of the Spirit to develop in your life. It's a great one, okay? It's going to cause you to have peace, you know, in your life. Rather than being frustrated been flustered every time someone annoys you. You'd be like, you know what? I'm just going to suffer along with this person. I'm going to exhort this person. I'm going to forgive this person. It's going to get you through life and, and have, you know, life more, uh, a life with, with much more joy, you know, a life with much more abundance, you know, as you walk in the spirit of the Lord. Let's pray.